Welcome to the Line Cruiser Project. What we do on this channel is review online listings for 80 series, 100 series, and 200 series Land Cruisers. And we do this in order to identify common issues that show up on these vehicles as they age, do it to make sure sellers are disclosing everything, at least we can tell from the information they provide. And then also we do it just to talk about them. It's fun to talk about Land Cruisers. I'm an enthusiast. I'd assume you're here because you are too. And I think you know all these discussions you know are entertaining and can be helpful if you're in the market for a Land Cruiser. So let's go ahead and look at this 1996 Toyota Land Cruiser uh, FZJ80. So this is the second to last year of the 80 series here in the United States. Uh, beautiful color combination, two-tone color here with Desert Dune Pearl up top and Moonglow Pearl down below. Uh, very good looking truck. But yeah, it's currently bid to $15,000. It's got four days left. And yeah, let's go through the details. So it's being sold out of Seminole, Florida. Uh, it's got 147,000 miles. Uh, it doesn't have the front and rear lockers. It's only a locking center differential. And everything else seems pretty normal. It it looks yeah pretty stock. Um, so it's got sunroof. It's got the roof rack. It's got the, um, the running boards, uh, third row seats, everything. Yeah, pretty standard. The truck was acquired in, by the seller in 2023, and work under current ownership is said to have included reupholstering the front seats and replacing the dashboard and carpets, as well as the tires, shocks, springs, spark plugs, ignition wires, and the distributor cap and rotor. So, yep. Yeah, the dashboard replacement's something pretty invasive. I'd assume it was, yeah, you could think why you would replace the dashboard. There could have been cracks in it, especially if this thing has lived in Florida its whole life. We'll try and verify that. And then, you know, just a suspension and engine tune-up. Uh, the FCJ80 shows 147,000 miles and is offered at no reserve with a clean Carfax report and a clean Florida title in the seller's name. Uh, so again, just very interesting. We see so many um, short holds on these Land Cruisers, uh, people picking up you know, and not owning them for longer than a year, doing some rehab work and then, yeah, selling them off. Um, I would assume that they are still making money on these because they just keep doing it. But hopefully the time will come where they kind of start losing <laughs> losing money on these flips. Uh, the truck is finished in Desert Dune and Moonglow Pearls. And yeah, it's got all of those normal factory things. Chips are visible in the windshield and photos of exter additional exterior blemishes are provided in the gallery. Um, overall, good looking truck, very stock. Um, I had a 1997 just like this. I yeah, very much regret selling it. It was just such a good looking truck. Um, Yep, so we've got just normal highway tires, likely in the stock size. Um, work in preparation for the sale is said to have included refinishing the wheels, rebuilding the knuckles, servicing the brakes, and replacing the tires, shocks, and springs. So we heard about those bottom three, those last three, but not uh, refinishing the wheels, the knuckles, and servicing the brakes. So that's all good work. It looks like somebody has yeah put a lot of work to get this thing ready to sell. Uh, the front bucket seats, second row bench, and third row bench are covered in tan leather. Just by the look of it, looks like the second row wasn't touched. It's only the front seats, and that's confirmed here with the description. And re replacement front seat gears were reportedly installed under current ownership, at which time the carpets, dashboard, and HVAC vents were replaced. So, yeah, full dash replacement. Crazy. Um, yeah, I wonder if that was new or used. The the dash, I don't think you can... Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's no longer available. Uh, but there, you know, there could be some uh, new old stock yeah, sitting around. Uh, yeah, surprising that just all that was done. Well, yeah, I would love to see some yeah prior photos, but I don't know if we're going to get them. Uh, interior amenities include a CD stereo, air conditioning, cruise control, and a digital clock, all very standard. Uh, looking at the steering wheel, that does look like a recover. So I very firmly have in my head that um, this vehicle lived its life in Florida, uh, was exposed to yeah, severe sun damage. Um, that's why the dash was replaced because it was just cracked all up. Um, steering wheel was refinished. And, um, yeah, we'll see. Uh, it looks like an original shifter, you know, handle, but that could also be just a replacement. So we'll, we'll see if that bears out. If the dash was so bad that it was cracked, the paint would be so bad that it would be oxidized. Um, and, you know, needing a repaint. Although the Desert Dune uh, is one of those colors that you know, kind of, you know, you could kind of hide it, but not the Moonglow Pearl on those fender flares. So uh, those... the whether it's you know painted on the body or on the fender flares, yeah, that Mingo Pearl originally, yeah, uh, gets the clear coat failure and then yeah, it starts to fade out. Uh, the six-digit odometer shows 147,000 miles, approximately 1,000 of which were added under current ownership. And yeah, maybe even uh, I'm already looking for the VIN stickers. Maybe a VIN sticker on the uh, driver's side fender. Um, 
but yeah, I, I'll be surprised if this isn't a repaint, but we'll, we'll find out. Uh, a fluid service was performed. Yeah, double check if you're interested in buying this. Looks like they went through a whole bunch of different systems, but just make sure that the um, all the fluids were done. So all the fluids means rear differential, front differential, transfer case, transmission fluid, engine oil, uh, brakes, coolant, and power steering. Those are all the fluids. Make sure they use the right power steering fluid, which is basically an automatic transmission fluid and not power steering fluid. Uh, looking here at these photos, we're not going to talk too much. It looks pretty, pretty clean underneath. Um, and yeah, just another comment there that this truck is only center locked and not triple locked. Uh, the Carfax report shows no accidents or other damage in this history in Missouri, Colorado, Oklahoma, Georgia, and Florida. Let's see how many owners this has had. Um, generally when there's all those states, that's going to mean a lot of owners and that seems to be the case. Uh, so let's see where it originally was delivered, originally delivered into Missouri and spent, let's see how much time we've got maintenance records. We don't know who did it. It just says service facility, but pretty consistent. Uh, and it was still in Missouri through 2004, 2006. Uh, st and then it looks like through maybe 2008, it was in Missouri. So 11 ish, 12 ish years in Missouri, uh, 90 ish thousand miles. And then went to Colorado and then in Colorado for a couple years, back to Missouri for a couple years, it looks like. Uh, still in Missouri through 2011, and then went to Oklahoma in 2012, so when it was about 15, 16 years old, uh, and 107,000 miles. So the mileage yeah, kind of stopped ticking up roughly in yeah, 2010, 2011 timeframe. And then it was in Oklahoma through um, yeah, 2013, and then went to Georgia. Uh, it's it's hard to know. It says vehicle purchase reported. Sometimes Carfax shows that as, um, you know, just like getting it retitled or, you know, in a new state if the same person owned it and they moved all over the place. But anyway, in 2014, it was back in Florida. So the idea that this thing had been in Florida for its entire life is not true. Um, so we'll have to verify, you know, why the, why the dash was replaced. Very interesting. Um, with the low mileage, yeah, you wouldn't necessarily expect that, but we'll hunt for signs of paint repair or anything else. Pulling this up in Google, yeah, we don't really get much. And then same thing with VIN or vehiclehistory.com. Um, no previous listing photos. So kind of struck out there. I was hoping for something, yeah, nice and juicy. <laughs> but there are a couple videos, so be sure to check those out. It looks like you've got a walk around, a driving video, and um, yeah, just some interior function videos and so on. Uh, but let's go ahead and jump into the photos because that's what we do. All right, so let me maximize Fury Viewing Pleasure. And yeah, let's go. Uh, it's a great finish. This is very, very shiny. Uh, yeah, far shine, shinier than most. Uh, I think the paint's in pretty good shape. So again, either <laughs> we'll find out uh, either repaint or not. So the first thing supporting a repaint that comes to my attention is the fender flare gasket here. Those would have been kind of matching the color of the fender flare here. So they wouldn't be black. So what that means is that the fender flares have been re removed and those have been replaced. Yeah, I've shown in recent videos where, yeah, they're not present. Some people yeah, don't think they're necessary or they yeah they don't have them on there. So it's, it's good that they're there and it's good that they've replaced them. Uh, looking here at the front, the valence and the, the gaps there look pretty good. Uh, this left side... Yeah, I don't know if it's the angle. Well, hopefully we can get a better straight up shot. But yeah, overall, like this looks really good from yeah, the front. Moving around to the driver's side, uh, that all looks yeah pretty good. Everything's in good alignment. Remember, we there was a white uh, 80 series we just covered. And the, the gap on those front doors, you know, between the front fender and the, the front, both driver and passenger door was so wide. This one seems yeah so much better. I don't know if that's like a 90, you know, 91, 2, 93, 94 line cruiser thing. And they fixed it like later on, or maybe those doors have been removed at some point, but definitely yeah it looks good. And those gaps look great here. Not really seeing any defects or anything really out of place here. The wheels look good, and this paint, just this paint combination, it's one of my favorites on the Land Cruiser. Yeah, looking here at the rear, everything seems spaced out pretty well. Nothing really grabbing my attention here either. The windshield wipers where it needs to be, all the, you know, the badges and the emblems, that all looks good. 
uh, kind of weird. I mean, this looks like Florida, but yeah, there's a looks like a U.S., a Florida, and a Texas flag. <laughs> I'm not, not sure why. Maybe is it like a I don't know a Texas uh, Roadhouse or <laughs> like one of those barbecue places. I don't know. Uh, yeah. Anyway, yeah, the passenger side of the vehicle that looks yeah looks clean as well. Uh, very nice presentation. This vehicle does have the little um, visors, like the rain visors here. Um, sometimes that can be something that people install if they if they smoke cigarettes, you know, in order to let the smoke out. Uh, it could also be just to you know have the windows open when it's raining and stuff like that. So, but just something to you know, if you see a vehicle like that, you know, it's worth asking and just verifying. You know, hey, has it been smoked? And if that bothers you, uh, otherwise, yeah, this looks yeah pretty clean. I. I'm skeptical <laughs> that the paint hasn't been done, but I don't I don't see any obvious indications yet. All right, looking at the front, I mean the gaps look pretty good. It looks like this uh, valence panel is maybe sticking out just a little bit. You know, that's like one of my like kind of pet peeves, but um, yeah, that panel's super flimsy anyway. So it looks good. Maybe maybe I could say there's a little bit of a paint difference between the valence panel and the fender. A little bit lighter on the valence panel. That's about the same there. It could just be the light. This is kind of like, you know, peak brightness through this angle. And again, there's your Texas flag there. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, sure enough, Texas, Florida, and, uh, and the United States. But yeah, good looking truck. Look at that. Yeah, very, very good looking. Um, the tires seem like they've got lots of life. Uh, we're probably going to get other lighting conditions, which I appreciate the photos, you know, kind of seeing, you know, the, the vehicle in different light. Uh, maybe there's a little bit of a dent there on the lower tailgate. Um, yeah, right there, uh, right below the oranges on the, uh, the Florida plate. But otherwise, like this thing's pretty, pretty minty. Uh, so this is showing that the, uh, the lights work, uh, the reverse lights turn on. Um, they didn't do a brake light test, but that's okay. Uh, nor show turn signals, but you know, th those bulbs are all relatively easy to change. Yeah, side profile here looks good in this different lighting. Yeah, nothing really jumping out at me exterior wise. This looks pretty good. Yeah, paint color's consistent, the gaps are consistent. Uh, all right, so now let's get into some detail photos. This will be good. Uh, yeah, a little, little scratch and some, yeah, some defect there on the fender flare or a little, yeah, a little kind of chip. It looks like, but like, is that it? Let's get a, I really want a detail shot of like the hood because we should be seeing some rock chips. So we're getting these photos now. Um, that looks pretty good. The gaps look good. I'm not seeing any rock chips really. Uh, there's the, the antenna. And looking here at the front, yeah, there's not really any rock chips on the hood. Uh, a couple little things on the lower valence panel. Not really any on that one. And you can kind of see that color difference I'm talking about. Is there a little, like, texture there? There's kind of a little... No, that's probably the, just a reflection from the little rivet there. Yeah, kind of funny to see the little right hand, uh, you know, in the glass there. It's kind of neat. Yeah, there's I'm, like these are detail shots. I'm not seeing anything wrong. I, I am seeing a lack of rock chips, specifically on the hood. You would expect for 100 and you know 70,000 miles, there'd be a little bit more of that. Um, but you know some of the you know telltale indicators, such as you know these gaskets being painted, that that hasn't happened. Um, there is a little bit of fade here on the plastic one one thing we haven't actually said this in a long time but the the paint on uh, plastic materials versus metal materials uh, behaves differently um, you know so like if this were all moon glow pearl and, and you can almost see it here you know it's a little bit you know we've got a little bit lighter color on the uh, on the fender flares than you know on the body um, so you would expect a little color difference on these handles but the little gasket around it yeah that hasn't been painted so that's a that's a good sign yeah, I think I'm getting to the point that yeah, you can see some more detail there on those handles, the little defects. Yeah, all super minor. Yeah, I'm going to go out on a limb and say this is all all original. Very nice. Yeah, super nice. 
It's in phenomenal shape for the for the age. Very cool. All right. Oh, this has something I haven't seen in so long. I've never understood it. You see this? These things rust out. The 80 series rust out on the leading edge of the upper hatch. That's incredible. We see a little bit of like haze in the paint here on the roof. Okay, so now this is something. The, the paint on the hood was pretty shiny. So I'm going to go and say that we've got to repaint at least on the hood and probably, yeah, most elsewhere. And it's just a good job. Um, but yeah, look at this upper hatch. You see that? Oh, that's incredible. I haven't seen that for a while. Yeah, very cool. Uh, the seam sealer used for these uh, these rain gutters, it's, you know, it's cracked, very normal thing. If you were really proactive, you would you know, get after that, If especially if you're going to be somewhere where you know there's going to be a lot of water on there. But yeah, the wheels and the tires and everything behind it, that all looks good. I'm, I'm still... I'm still on the fence on a repaint just for the record. I don't it I don't know why it bothers me so much, but <laughs> I, I just want to know for sure. But yeah, this all looks this all looks yeah, pretty clean. Uh looking at the little, you know, pinch weld here. This is the spot where they like to rest. That looks good. And then I actually just did a video on a Land Cruiser at uh, 40th anniversary edition in Chicago where this was all rusted out. This is how it's supposed to look. There's a little like reinforcement, there's seam sealer around this weld, and yeah, this is how it's supposed to look, not looking at the underside of the carpet like on that other vehicle. But yeah, this this looks great underneath. Got the little fender aprons in place. A lot of yeah, a lot of the Land Cruisers lose this one. This is on the driver's side. Oh, excuse me, on the passenger side. You can see the exhaust. This this one's usually missing. But yeah, this there's there's like I'm not seeing anything, and yeah, this looks all original. So yeah, it means this thing was you know probably parked inside and was taken care of. Um, not having the rest here, especially after it being in yeah, Missouri for like ten plus years. Yeah, that's, that's pretty good. Uh, yeah, so the front seats were yeah, allegedly refinished. Steering wheel is refinished as well. Yeah, the texture on the leather is a little off, but yeah, I haven't really seen anybody put together uh, yeah, a factory-looking kit. Looks like the armrests on the doors were replaced as well, and you can just see the light color difference, and then if you were to zoom in, you'd be able to see the texture difference there. But it, it looks, looks pretty good. Uh, it's the original kind of like pattern, so yeah, that looks good. Carpets look good. Floor mats have some stains, but I think you can still get those. Okay, now back to the idea of sun damage. Look at the seatbelt receptacle. Um, yeah, I'd consider that you know relatively you know faded. Um, good to see the little rubber gasket between the center console pieces. And there's your either new or yeah, used replacement dash. They're obviously very you know proud of it. <laughs> That's a big job to replace. Uh, kind of interesting here. I, okay. So this is an actually, I think we've got an indication that, that, you know, confirmation we it's already described in the description, but this is an indication that the dash has been replaced. So if you don't take care right up here, you've got the VIN sticker and this is like the dash cover goes over it. And you can see on this front edge where you could imagine if you're not like paying attention and, and being sure to lift it over if you were to like tug hard enough on the dash you could get that plate to kind of curl a little bit and yeah sure enough look at that so there's you know confirmation i guess that the yeah the dash has been replaced and then just another like little indicator of some damage here on the uh, on the kind of like the dome light intensity knob now the shifter handle looks pretty good the top of the doors look good that's a pretty good uh, steering wheel kit. If if somebody feels adventurous, please ask. Uh, yeah, where they got that from? Yeah, it looks looks pretty good. Uh, just some little pry marks. It looks like on this uh, little piece. Oh uh, yeah, one hundred forty seven thousand four hundred sixty nine miles. Uh, yeah, battery looks good. Let's see, are we gonna get? Yeah, we're not gonna get coolant and stuff. Looks like somebody's you know taken and removed some of the wood trim on this. There's just some adhesive laying around. Um, yeah, just don't use like Gooby Gun. Use something, you know, like alcohol or yeah, something a little bit more mild uh, to get that stuff off. Um, you might see residue on the other parts of the dash that, you know, that, that had that wood trim. But ultimately that wood trim, you know, kind of works out in your favor because it protects the, the plastics. It looks like there's, you know, still a little bit of goo, you know, left over, maybe even a little bit of sand from the Florida beach. And yeah, I mean, it looks, looks, 
looks really good. Just some minor, you know, signs. I mean, this isn't the best, you know, like fitting center console leather I've ever seen. And yeah, we're not really getting a detailed shot of the um, of the shifter handle here, but yeah, it looks like it's kind of been touched up or refinished just a little bit. Uh, not gonna miss the opportunity to take a look at the vent sticker there on the driver or the passenger door, and the vents are all good. Glove box is fine. All that seems to be in place. Uh, not seeing the you know the drips that we you know sometimes see on these eighty series from like heater core and stuff like that. Uh, passenger door card looks good and clean. Yep, that looks looks nice. Nothing really jumping out at me there. The you know the seam sealer across the bottom of the door that all looks good. Yeah, this this maybe wasn't used much in the Missouri snow. Um, based on what I'm seeing, looks pretty good. Uh, Vin sticker on the driver door. I mean, that looks a little, yeah, it looks a little gross, but I'm sure it cleans up just fine. And yeah, all that seems to be in place and looking just fine. Good good photos here, nice detail shots. Um, just some defects here on the door jam. Uh, and again, it wouldn't be a line cruiser if the seatbelt wasn't, you know, like hanging down. So yeah, there's that. <laughs> but yeah, this is super clean. Uh, still in the front here. I was hoping to see, so this would be another good indicator of sun damage. Uh, you saw in the video of the Night Shadow Pearl one not so long ago where they removed the, um, you know, the wood trim over here and you could see a, a you know, pretty good outline for where the sun had kind of cooked it. Um, not seeing that here, to be honest. So maybe, maybe, so, I go back, I'm going back and forth, but I know, you know, sun damage on this might not be a thing. Uh, they've done the little fix here for the nets. Um, good to see they're not sagging. Uh, that's very, very common on these. And it looks like the wood trim, they've left it here for the second row. Haven't pulled that off yet. Uh, do see a Vince sticker here on the rear quarter panel on the driver's side. Factory original leather there um, on the second row. Yep, that all looks just fine. And then, yeah, they're kind of tricking us here. They show us this <laughs> position here from the second row and then the same shot of the front row seat. Um, but yeah, back to the second row, now to the front row in the cockpit. Uh, door jam here looks great. Door jam on the passenger door looks good as well. Let me take a little peek at this. So this line is interesting. That looks like a paint line to me. All right, we're going to have to pay attention to that. I would love to run my finger over that. Kind of sounds gross, actually. <laughs> but not really seeing like that paint line extend up here. So that's, that's definitely curious. The carpets look good. Headliner looks just fine. It's got some weird texture. Uh, a very common thing is for either the windshield or the sunroof to leak. Uh, the drains can get clogged. We've got some discoloration here at the top of the A-pillar and the headliner. I'm presuming, you know, that it's either it had a leak at some point or it yeah, has one ongoing now. So just, you know, take some, you know, strong, you know, cord and run it down those drains, open up that sunroof and run it down the drains. <laughs> On these photos, I was kind of asking like, what's wrong with the tree? <laughs> but it looks like there's some, yeah, just some small defects in the windshield. Um, passenger side rear quarter panels, got the vent sticker and some marks from, yeah, likely the seatbelt getting stuck in there. But back to the idea of like a repaint, like this is all, um, yeah, factory masking here. So that, yeah, that looks fine. Yeah, same thing here in the rear. I, I'm pretty sure this paint is how it is. They, they cut it off here. They, you know, they don't run it all the way across. Uh, rear cargo area looks looks good. It's got the third row seats in there. Everything seems to be in place. Um, yeah, just missing kind of like a cargo mat. But yeah, this is pretty clean. Let's let's take a look at this little metal uh, sill here. Um, Sometimes. Mm. Sometimes these can rest a little bit. So let's zoom in and kind of look at this. If if this is in fact rest, you can maybe see a little bit, you know, a little bit of red there. Um, it's worth pulling this up and checking. Oh, actually, look at that. Interesting. So I do see a little darkness here and maybe a little bit of like rest residue. So yeah, if I were picking this up, I would pull this off. I'd, you know, probably peel back the carpet here, pull off this seal 
and there could be there could be rust here. Um, I had a Moonglow Pearl Desert Dune just like this, and very similar rust thing. I'll actually throw up a picture for you. So yeah, go ahead and you know look at that. That's what I found here in the back. Uh, not quite sure what caused that, but that maybe seems to be present here on this uh, 1996 being auctioned. All right, moving to the engine bay. Uh, looks pretty good. Let me zoom in here just to see VIN stickers. Yeah, so we've got a VIN sticker on the passenger side and the driver's side. The insulator looks pretty good. Let's take a peek at these bolts and stuff. Yeah, that all looks like original and in, in factory. So, um, front of the, you know, like front of the engine, the valve cover gasket distributor, that all looks dry. Engine bay looks exquisitely clean. Actually looks in really good shape. It's got all the kind of like original clamps and, you know, the hoses all look in good shape. Yeah, radiator looks good. Yeah, not a lot to say. This looks like a pretty good, pretty clean engine bay. Um, yeah, interesting. It looks like these exhaust shields have been replaced and they've got new, um, yeah, new hardware. Yeah, other than that, that's a yeah, that's a pretty minty engine bay. And then you can see how the uh, yeah the um, cruise control cable is supposed to be mounted in here. It's got like a little clip that retains it. Uh, same thing with the um, accelerator cable. You know, everything is in place. We've seen just recently, you know, somebody looking to get thirty plus thousand dollars for a yeah, Land Cruiser, and you know, stuff like that wasn't in place. This is what I expect for yeah high twenties, you know, thirty thousand dollars and so on especially if it's unlocked, it's gotta be pretty nice. A uh, little, little bit of kind of cracking and stuff in this, um, you know, the reservoir here for the, for the brake cylinder or brake booster. And these hoses here on the evaporator stuff, yeah, they are a little crunchy, but they're probably fine. All right, moving to the undercarriage. This looks nice and clean. Yeah, it's hard to believe this thing lived, you know, 10 plus years in, in Missouri. That's wild. A um, little bit of wetness here on the front of the engine. It's all yeah, pretty common. It looks like they've you know cleaned up some of the grime, maybe to check and make sure they got the leaks taken care of. But there could be you know the oil pump likes to leak, and as well as does the the front main. But you know there's other residue here on the uh, the front of the differential. So just normal leakers. <laughs> looks like they yeah cleaned off the the bottom section of the transmission bell housing. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> I don't know if you're looking for like a rear main seal or you're looking to hide it. Yeah, that's a good way to hide a rear main seal leak. <laughs> that's funny. Transmission pan looks good otherwise. Yeah, this this looks 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 pretty good. Um Yeah, so this is exactly what I thought. Um on this Vintag, they've kind of curled up those edges, you know, probably from trying to yeah, peel that that original dash out of there. Um, so here's some detail shots of yeah, some of the defects, uh, VIN stickers, and so on. Yeah, these I'd love detail shots like this. This tells me that this fender has never been taken off. So the idea that this is the original paint. Yeah, so I think that's my final say on this. I, I think we've got the yeah, original paint uh, on this vehicle. Would like to see some you know paint readings, but yeah, that's a good looking truck. So for the record, this is what, you know, given the mileage and stuff, this is what like a 30 plus thousand dollar, you know, if you're going to go for that high of money, this is what you, you know, should go for, especially if you're not looking for a locker or whatnot. This is, yeah, this is a good example. Um, yeah, clean undercarriage, even though it's lived in, um, you know, so-so rust area for, for some of its life. Yeah. So there's a part of me that wants to say it'll break 30, but we haven't seen a lot of non-triple locked 80 series really regardless of mileage unless it's super low and it's a collector type you know vehicle we haven't seen a lot of them go over 30 if they're not triple locked so i think i'm gonna say like mid to high 20s let's say i don't know like 27 26 we'll do 26 500 um with the questionable maybe paint on the hood um and the dash replacement, I mean, th those are good things, right? Somebody's, you know, maintained it, but, you know, it means somebody's had that entire dash apart, right? Did they get every connector, you know, redone? I don't know. So anyway, those are my thoughts. Let's say $26,500. And yeah, I don't know. Am I crazy? It's a really nice truck. Like, don't get me wrong, but um, yeah, and 26500 that's a good price for this. So 
All right, well, there you have it. Thanks for checking out the channel and the video, and I hope you have a good day.